You know, and a lot of people say, well, healthy costs more. And I, first of all, don't believe that. But the second thing is what costs more? Buying those beans at the grocery store? Or is it getting diabetes or heart disease or the cost of the medical stuff? The opportunity cost of less, less productivity in your life as you age because you can no longer do those things that you want to do because you have those chronic diseases. What's the value? It's exciting to see. It's exciting to have conversations about life, sustainability, legacy, and not just talking about financing all the time. Don talks about really a commitment to leadership. I think that's the distinctive part that makes it so powerful. I've achieved the American dream and I'm committed to helping others do the same. Hello America. Hello world. I'm Bo Parfit. I'm co-host on the Impact Podcast with Don Winner. I work at DLP Capital. And I'm super excited for today because we have Nick Butner, who's a global impact leader, and with us today. So how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. I'm not in Minnesota where it's 30 degrees. I'm down in Puerto Rico. What, what could go better? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> so for the audience, um, Nick and I have a connection. So we're both from the upper Midwest. Mm -hmm. So Minnesota, you're from Minnesota, I'm from Michigan. Um, and DLP is out of Florida. So a lot of people I work with go, what, what's the upper Midwest like? And I'm like, well, we have nine months of winter and three months of bad sledding. Yeah, yeah and, and what I like to say is we actually have a period between spring and fall that we call mosquito season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful. Thank you for being with us. I'm really excited about, really excited to have you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Wonderful. So I think, you know, the audience, we get a lot of feedback. Our audience is fabulous. They, they want to connect with you and in things you're passionate about and how can they help. So one way, I think, to build a connection between you and I talking here and our listeners is what, what was your childhood like and how did that shape you to the person you are today? I, you know, I grew up in Minnesota, like you said. I have three older brothers. My mother was kind of blessed. The only time we ever fought is my brother Dan never let me do the ironing. Mm. It was really kind of <laughs> tragic. Um, but, you know, I had really good role models, not only with my brothers and my grandparents and with my parents. Um, as a kid, I was a free-range kid. What I mean by that is in the summers, my mother kicked me out of the house, said, go run and find some. So you go to the playground, you connect up with your friends. And we tried new things. We, we would be curious, and you'd learn from that. Like I remember my brother Steve learned, if you remember what farmer matches are, those are the ones you can strike on anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He learned that he shouldn't put a pile of them in his pocket and go biking because they rub together and ignite. <laughs> he only made that mistake once. But I also learned social because as uh, you go into the park with your friends, if you got in a fight with somebody, that next day you had nobody to hang out with. Mm -hmm. So you learned how to rebuild those relationships. And then... Um, I had an adventurous family, not, well, not an old adventurous, but um, curious. My father every year would, would put us in a van and we'd go to national parks and we'd go hiking, we'd go exploring and just that curiosity, but you do it as a family with that strong family unit, um, which, which is, I think, where, you know, kind of gives me my values. I love that. And uh, our CEO, Don Wenner, has a goal with his family to go to all the national parks. Um, so that's something that you guys could connect on later, too. It's perfect. And, yeah. and again, it's, it's looking at nature. It's the education. But even when I look at, like, Christmas, you know, I'm not somebody that will give a Christmas present. I'd rather do an experience because experience develops those deeper relationships. The experiences are things that you remember versus that gift that you get for Christmas. I like that. I love that. So I think some of our audience will know kind of what a blue zone is, mm -hmm. and, they, and, and some of them are gonna know it really well, some are gonna go, you know, I, maybe I read an article in the past, and then some don't know what it is at all. Sure. So what is a blue zone? How, how, did, how did you start the blue zones, and what is it? And just walk us through that. Sure, um, if you look at data, um, the Danish Twin Studies, 80% of how long you live is lifestyle factors and habits. What, what we wanted to do at Blue Zones, I have a brother, Dan, I have myself, that we've traveled the world. My brother, Dan, holds three Guinness Book of World Records. Um, what he told me on one of it, when he got back from his first trip, is that he, it was from Alaska to Argentina. What he said is, I learned more in 12 months on a bicycle seat than I did in 12 years of formal education about the world mm -hmm. and my relationship to the world. Mm. Not that, that education is not important, but there's a value when you leave that, that 
that comfortable space. And you go out and you really listen and you learn. And if you can bring those lessons back to try to improve not only your life, but your community's life, there's value in it. So what Blue Zones was, uh, so Dan and I created this history of travel, um, trying to solve mysteries and really jumping into cultures and, and doing it. And one of the ones that we did was what's the secret of longevity? If 80% of how long we live is determined by lifestyle factors, what we wanted to do is find the place in the world where people are living the longest life. Mm. We wanted to meet up with those centenarians and, and, and really have really conversations, and not just with the Yahoo's from Minnesota, but demographers and physicians and the top of class public health people so that we could reverse engineer a recipe for longevity. And that's what Blue Zones is, is we found the five locations around the world, the hotspots, uh, where people are living the longest life, and we and we found the nine commonalities. And now, what Blue Zones is doing is focus more in how are we bringing those lessons to communities, to try to and individuals to try to improve well-being. Fabulous, fabulous journey. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit. Of, tell us about Blue Zone and what what are some of the the key ingredients? Those nine commonalities. Sure, sure. You know, there were, and I got to be honest with you. I think a lot of them are things that we learned in in third grade, and they're things that I think our, our, our past generations, our parents, um, taught us. The things like they move naturally, they walk to school, they walk to their friend's house. I met this guy in Costa Rica who biked 20 miles every day to visit his aging mother. Mm. He was 80 years old. His mother is 104. <laughs> you know, so, so they used active transfer. They moved naturally. It wasn't marathons or whatever. It's just part of their life. Um, they had simple techniques to reduce stress. Stress is tied to inflammation. And it's tied to most age-related diseases, whether physical or cognitive. Mm -hmm. So what are those things that we can do to reduce that inflammation? And in all the Blue Zone communities, they had techniques, whether it was praying or ancestor veneration, whether it was walking with friends or a little bit of wine or taking a nap, simple techniques, a strong sense of purpose that they could articulate. Um, in every Blue Zone community, they not only had a sense of purpose, but whether 20 or 100, they could articulate it. And that's seven and a half years of longevity. Um, when it comes to your diet, they, f they weren't vegans or vegetarians, but it was mostly plant-based with a lower caloric intake than we tend to have here in America. Mm. And then I think what holds everything else up, it was the value around the relationships in mm. our communities, the relationships with your family, having that love all the way through your life, as well as having strong friends that support well-being, engaged friendships, where you're present and you're supporting the health of everybody in your community. You gave a, um, you gave a, a good statistic earlier about um, loneliness, and I wanna connect that with what you just said about the importance of relationship. Can you tell the audience a little bit about that, please? Yeah, according to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, uh, about 35 years ago, the average American had three best friends. It's now down to a friend and a half. And I always joke about how do you get that half a friend? Is that Twitter or yeah. social media? <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, if you have less than three friends, you're defined as lonely. And the impact that that has on our health is about the same as smoking 20 cigarettes a day. Wow. Isolation actually kills us. It's, it, you don't have the support when you age, when you fall down and you're all alone and you're hurt. Um, you're supporting people with your mental health. So as I'm having those rough days, I have somebody to talk to that will listen to me. But I also have support as I'm raising kids, as I'm raising family, as I'm trying to figure out my spouse has cancer or some other disease, how do I become a caregiver? That more that personal board of directors that you have, the better off you are when it comes to um, helping you through. Fabulous. Um, you know, I've also heard you, you mention over, over, you know, the, uh, the years about, you know, when you go to a restaurant. So tell, this, tell the, the audience about the statistic yeah. where people spend most of their life. Yep. And then let's talk about, okay, when you go to a restaurant, the first thing they give you is this, and how can, how can yeah. you kind of turn that upside down? You know, it's what the heart of Blue Zones, the heart of what we do right now with our community work is this. <laughs> My big aha moment was never once did I meet somebody at 50 who said they wanted to go on a diet. In all my time in the Blue Zones, I never met one person at 50 who said they wanted to exercise. Longevity was never something that they pursued, rather it ensued because of their environment. We, 50 years ago in America, we had about the third of the rate of obesity. We had about a seventh of the rate of diabetes and a tenth of the rate of dementia, according to some studies. Um, but 
why is that? Whereas it was because our parents were smarter or grandparents are better or smarter? No, it's because of the design of our environment. I can't um, go buy a hammer or fill up a tank of gas without having to go into a gauntlet of food choices. People are making $10 billion a year on Madison Avenue selling us the foods that are the worst for us. The design of our community, nobody walks to school anymore. We're afraid because the design of our community is car-centric, so we don't have active transportation where we get to work, where we can do anything. And right now with Amazon, you don't even have to leave your house to go to the grocery store. You can sit on your couch all day long, so we're not moving as a community, but we also don't have those social friendships anymore. And that impacts our mental health. So what we're doing is trying to design communities where that healthy choice is easier. And the example that you're using is one piece of that, of that system is working with restaurants. Um, not to take food off of their menu, but how do we put choices on the menu so that people who want to be healthier can be? How do we create choices uh, around the design? So like if you um, instead of getting that basket of bread automatically that you slather butter on and eat and eat way too many calories, the customer has to ask for it. Restaurant can still serve it, but that healthier choice is easier. How are we designing our communities to make it just a little, to nudge us, to make it just a little bit easier mm -hmm. for us to be healthier? I love that. And I struggle with that because I have two boys and whenever we go out to dinner, they always eat one or two pieces of bread with a lot of butter and then the meal comes and then they're full. Yeah. So... Um, when I remember, hey, no bread, hold the bread, hold the bread. But, um, you know, some of your ideas, you know, yeah. hey, we'll bring a salad out or bring fruit out or, ve or, ve or vegetables and, you know, a dipping sauce. Yeah. So those are, I love those ideas. Yeah. And the heart of what we do is, is, is we work with communities now, 75 communities across the United States, to, to look at how are we designing for active transportation, whereas parents are not afraid to move. Uh, to allow your kids to walk and bike, where where we have safe parks, where we have safe communities, where we have a healthier food system, no matter what your socioeconomic status, where the design of the places, where you go, where you work, where you live, where you play, where you eat, where you buy foods, nudges you just to be able to make that healthier choice. And then lastly, it's who we spend our time with, our family mm. and our friends. You know, when you look at hospitals today in, in America or healthcare, what we focus in on acute care. We focus on waiting for you to get sick and then, and then um, doing something about it. But it doesn't do anything for the people that are at risk or are healthy. And our, our hospitals will do behavioralist management and they'll do a coaching. But the problem is I know I shouldn't eat a Big Mac every day for lunch. I know I shouldn't drink a big soda. I know I shouldn't smoke a cigarette. But we as individuals, we do it anyways, because at the time we do it, we don't die. I can eat a Big Mac every day for lunch and not die. Mm -hmm. But 10 years later, I probably have obesity, I have heart disease, I have those things that now all of a sudden I gotta go to the doctor and I'm getting a lower quality of life. So what we try to focus on is who are you spending your time with? Mm -hmm. How are you defining those relationships? Where are you spending your time? And what's the social norm or culture in those communities about well-being? And how do we break down silos so that everybody's charging in that same direction so that effectively, as a kid, as a parent, as an aging adult, we're put on a treatment plan without us even really knowing that we're on one. And doing it in a way, these are community-led, so they're not me, but we allow communities to define that. And we bring in a framework and measurement to be able to support it so that ideally you're reducing obesity, you're reducing those things that not only impact our quality of life, but I think just importantly, and, or, or our quantity of life, but I think more importantly, our quality of life. So you can spend more time with your kids without being sick. I love that. I know a lot of people in the audience will, that are listening to this, they... So you said, was there five original blue zones? Is that, did I hear that right? Yep, the five okay. hotspots. It's Okinawa, Japan, yep. Sardinia in Italy, the Nicoya Peninsula of Costa Rica, um, Icaria, it's an island off the coast of Turkey, mm -hmm. and then here in America, Loma Linda, California, right outside of LA. All right, everyone, so there's one in the US, okay? <laughs> there's one in, okay, hey, that's- We did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. So I wanna talk a little bit about what's kind of going on today yeah. in the blue zones. And you mentioned you're working with 75 cities, which is fabulous. So tell, let's hear about what you're doing today. Yeah. And then if you can marry the fact, like there's people listening to this that are gonna to wanna to plug in and help. Yeah. So how can people plug in? Sure, a um, few things. Um, what we're doing with communities, are these community led? It's not blue zones coming in and saying, this is what you have to do. 
But every community in the nation is doing great things. And every community in the nation has, uh, are, are still on a journey. They have not hit the top of the mountain when it comes to well-being. So what Blue Zones tries to do is we have, a, we have a measurement system with Gallup to measure, to understand what's that baseline we want to move. We work with communities around healthcare partners in the community. Is it diabetes? Is it heart disease? Is it obesity? Um, we have a framework that builds coalitions in the communities, break down isolation so that we build a plan. Spend nine months building that right plan that's based in measurement. We hire a local team on the ground because at the end of the day, most of this work is done by volunteers on the side of somebody's desk. But if you have somebody waking up every day and charging to really fight the things that impact us, not only health-wise, but economically, there's huge economic value in this in communities but to be able to do that. So our framework moves the needle, and these are three to five-year projects um, where, where the cost isn't insignificant to do it, but what we're doing is designing the, how more walkability, bikeability, better placemaking in ways that the community wants, the needs of the community, whether it's social economic, we look at healthier food systems, we, we have, P, we have uh, IP around work sites and restaurants and schools that help design those environments in ways that they want it. But we're seeing outcomes around student learning, around well-being, we're seeing outcomes around claims cost reduction or more productivity or, or, or less turnover mm -hmm. because, you're, because as a work site, you're focusing on the well-being of your staff. But I think one of the things that we do is we have a very strong brand and a very good story. And if you can wrap that brand, so when you go and you look at a menu at a, at a, at a restaurant and you see that blue zone or go to a grocery store, if you're seeing these banners around the community or the communication around, around it, that all brings a brand around. Now you have something to wrap mm -hmm. that wrapper. And if you have the right measurement, the right key performance indicators, we have great success in moving well-being. Now, when I look at Blue Zones and what key people can do, first of all, you don't have to be a Blue Zone community. Start with, with really thinking about not, I'm gonna go on a diet to lose this weight, or I'm gonna start exercising and running every day, but how are you setting up your environment? How are you setting up your environment with your family that supports it? So you're eating together, you're, you're journeying together, you have the support network. How are you designing your home? Designing it so it's pro plant based or pro food. So, what's on your counter? Is it a bag of chips? So, when you want that impulse, or is it a basket of fruit? Mm -hmm. You know, what's in your bedroom when you want to sleep? You know, it, it, your bedroom should only be used for two things sleeping, one of them. I'll let you guys decide what that other one is. Mm -hmm. But so, get the phone, get the light, dark room, get the TVs out of that. That's what you focus on in that room. How are you designing that environment? But also, how are you leveraging, understanding your skills as an individual and your value and giving it out as a way to support your friends and as a way to support your community? Be engaged. Right now, we look at our communities, we're so isolated. How are we breaking down that isolation so that we're all charging together and supporting each other when life gets tough? Uh, you know, I, I love that. And um, our CEO, Don Winter, has a quote that he always says. And he said, many people have the will to succeed, but few people have the will to prepare to succeed. And what you're talking about here is preparing, really focusing on that plan. So whether if, if you want to be a blue zone city or just start, you know, start somewhere, start you know, in your local micro system of your life, you got to plan. That's it. You know, and plan it. So I, I love this. That's, that's it, and understand the challenges. You know, we talked earlier around our foods and our diets. You have to know what's good for you. You have to have the right rituals. If you're ordering all your foods by numbers as you're going through the drive-through, or if you're sitting in front of the TV and you're not sitting down at that family unit or pre-planting your food, um, the food has to taste good. People come to me and go, healthy food, I, I don't know how to cook or prepare, it doesn't taste good. You, of course, if you don't like Brussels sprouts, you're not gonna eat it. How do you make it taste good? And how do you make it easy? We live busy lives. We're trying to prepare for our kids and for our families. We just got off of work. We got a half an hour. How do you make it easy to be able to do that? And I think that's important. You know, and a lot of people say, well, healthy costs more. And I, first of all, don't believe that. But the second thing is what costs more? Buying those beans at the grocery store? Or is it getting diabetes or heart disease or mm. the cost of the medical stuff, the cost of the, the, the opportunity cost of less, less productivity in your life as you age because you can no longer do those things that you want to do because you have those chronic diseases? What's the value? 
Um, I love the topic on food, and I think there's a there's a new book coming out that kind of addresses this. Do you mind uh, telling yeah. the, telling the world what that is? I, I'm I'm incredibly lucky because I also have my mentor and my brother Dan, who's really a visionary around telling the story. He's the one who wrote the books and the National Geographic. I just support it in the backside. And um, one of the things he that he did is a few years ago, he went to the Blue Zone communities, went to the centenarians, and he said, what did you eat when you were a kid? Mm -hmm. And they made them the foods. And it's all delicious. Mm -hmm. And he wrote down the recipes. A National Geographic did, did, did a photograph, and we made sure you get all those buy foods at your grocery stores. And really easy way to do it. And it was so popular that during COVID, he jumped in one of the Sprinter vans and went around the United States meeting chefs that are cooking here in America, but using things that are linked to plant-based and, and diet. So in there he has like a, a, a chef in the Southwest that is looking at Southern cooking. Mm -hmm. He met up with, a, with another chef that um, took the, the, the uh, foods that came over on the slave trips from Africa and keeping them fresh and alive and they taste great. Mm -hmm. When you look at Tex-Mex, a lot of people are like, oh, Tex-Mex is great, but it's horrible for you. So chefs around looking at Tex-Mess and using those flavors in ways that are also healthy. Um, so that book's coming out on December 8th in Amazon. But what I love about it, and again, you know, to each your own, is what he, his goal is to try to make it easy, to try to make it taste good, and try to make it so that you can feed it to your family, so that it's not just you, but you can share it. I love it. Um, talking about this, I'm, I haven't, um, you know, lunch is coming up. I'm getting a little hungry now. <laughs> Fabulous. So, so, so there's someone listening right now that wants to know, you know what, I am, I have a leadership position in my community and I want to have Blue Zones come and present potentially helping my community. Or there's some, so in that, in, for that person, that demographic, how do they learn more? How do they find you? Uh, in two ways. Um, I, number one is my email is simple. I'm just going to give it. It's nick at bluezones.com. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but you can also go to bluezones.com. You can learn more about the community work and the impact that we have. Because again, if you're doing well-being work in your community because it's the right thing to do, that's great. But it's not sustainable unless you're also thinking around the impact. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing well-being in an organization, if my leadership doesn't see where that's fitting into lowering costs or improving it, they're not going to continue to invest in it. As a community, if you're not thinking around the economic value of it, you're not going to continue to do it. So on our website, we have some case studies from communities of all sizes and the impact that we've had on all different um, uh, demographics in there. And there's also a, a place where they're on there which you can reach out to us as well. Love to talk to you, share what Blue Zones is, and just talk story. Fabulous. And for the individuals out there, or the f small families or you know, micro, micro communities, we've, we've already covered a lot that they can just start and doing, you know, they could start tonight, right? They could yeah. start tomorrow. And I'll throw a couple other things out there. On our website, we have a true vitality test, which, which it's about 35 questions, it takes about five minutes. And what it looks is what's your average uh, healthy life expectancy, not just your life expectancy, but your healthy life expectancy. Um, and we also have a true happiness test that looks at kind of your happiness. And on, there, on that site is also tools you can use that include recipes, that includes things that, that, that can start helping you kind of, again, focus on your family and design your family, design your relationships with your friends, design your relationships. And again, the last thing I want to say is Blue Zones isn't about diet. It's not a diet program. It's not an exercise program. If you really want to drive what, what the most important things in our health, it has to be well-being. Mm. It has to be holistic health, which includes our mental health as well. And how are we designing environments for all? Mm -hmm. So that, because if you don't have that mental health, you also, it's going to impact your quality of life as well through stress and through other things that create that inflammation. So look at it holistically when you're thinking about design and focus on how are you setting up your environment to make that healthy choice unavoidable for you and your family. I love it. I can't wait to, to go home and uh, do the vitality test and the happiness test with my family and friends. I mean, that, that's yeah. a great way to get together and all do it together. Yeah. So fabulous. So a question, I want to end with this. How long do you think you live for? 
What's your What's your best guess? You know, um, that that's a really wonderful question. I got a uh, uh, one of the speakers yesterday asked a question I really liked. Um, what are those five? If if you want to live to one hundred, because I would like to live to one hundred, and like everybody else, I don't want to live to one hundred with a bunch of diseases. Mm-hmm. And one one of the things he said, and I thought it was great, or what are those five things you want to do when you're one hundred? So not just living to 100, you know, like, like, you know, getting up and down off of the ground, being able to throw a ball with your friend or whatever it is. What are those things that you want to do um, that are really important to you at that age that gives a quality? Because I would like to live in my hundreds, but I also want that stronger quality of life. And that's one of the reasons why I focus on that environment and and in all honesty, try to look at the places around the world that are growing old in ways that I emulate and seeing if I can use those evidence-based practices and bring them into my life so that I can do it. And also, I'm doing it in ways that support my friends because I don't want to do it alone. It supports my family because I don't want to do it alone. I love it. All right. I, so our CEO, Don, wants to live to 150, which okay. is cool. And I, I'm kind of... So you said 100. I, I'm kind of, you know, that 100 to maybe 110. There it is. You know, hey, why not, right? And, and you'll, you'll be able to do it with your, 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 the, who you are socially, but also your activity level and your movement and the way, the way you look to life and alignment to purpose. And you know, it's like you said earlier, it's you have that plan so that you know how to do it. Well, fabulous. It. Well, everyone, Nick Butner, Blue Zones. He's mentioned how you can get a hold of him. They have a fabulous website. Um, He's making a huge impact on the world. Thank you, thank you, thank thank you. you. So we're gonna do a high five up here. All right, right. thank you. Thanks, thank you. (laughs)